Okay, now I'm gonna walk you through step by step how the conversion information travels from Acuity to our website, to Google Tag Manager, to services like Google Analytics, Google Ads, or Facebook Pixel. So we're gonna go take it step by step and I'm gonna explain what exactly is happening. So this is the best way to do it in my opinion, so let's go. So of course the first thing that happens is that someone makes a booking, they click complete appointment, so let's start with that. Okay, so what does this do? Well, this is gonna fire whatever is added to our custom conversion tracking. And remember, we can't send the conversion from here, but we can use this feature to send a message to our website so we can send the conversion from our website. And this is exactly what we're doing. We have this uh, JavaScript um, function and we are posting a message to our website from Acuity to our website and it has this Acuity conversion success. It has the email ID type, appointment type, calendar and the price and we are sending all that information. So in our website here, we must now listen for this message. We can't hear it unless we listen. That's a lesson for life. Okay, so the first step is this Acuity uh, conversion listener. There are two versions and this is kind of the version I recommend. So this is a tag, uh, a snippet of code, which will be fired on all pages in your website. And it's always just going to be listening for the uh, message from Acuity, the conversion message. So because this is fired on all pages, then it doesn't matter if you create or delete your Acuity uh, booking pages, it's going to work everywhere in your website. Okay, so this is listen for those messages, uh, logs some stuff to the console for debugging, and if we hear the equity conversion is success, remember equity conversion is success. If this is what we get, then we are going to do something called data layer push. So the data layer is kind of a JavaScript thing with all the information about the conversion, like price, appointment type, uh, ID, so you don't get duplicates if they kind of mm, refresh the thank you page, for example, you don't get duplicates because of the correct ID. Uh, you have the currency, so that must be correct for, for example, Google Analytics uh, to work. And you have, you know, the all the information uh, including the email if you're using, for example, Google Ads enhanced conversion tracking, which is a more accurate way to track conversions based on kind of personal information like um, the customer email. So we fill this data layer and you know it has to be in a specific format and we, we fill that data layer up. So then we are able to use that information really easily for all of our conversion tracking, you know, Google Ads, Facebook Pixel, Google Analytics, all that. So we also launched this event, and in our case, this is a purchase event. So this is the kind of second part of the funnel. We started here, now we are in a listener, and we fire this purchase event. So let's take a look at that one. In our triggers, this is again my uh, setup you can buy and this is kind of the perfect demo. So here we have this trigger. So as you can see event name is purchase. So whenever that event is fired from our listener tag, then this trigger will fire and this trigger will fire any tags you want to uh, send the conversion information to. I've added a filter for the conversion method and the reason for this is that because we're using the purchase event in the data layer, we want to know if this was an equity booking conversion so we don't mix the purchases with e-commerce purchases. So maybe you sell, I don't know, shoes or whatever and you know you would also have the purchase event for the when person buys shoes so this is kind of a filter to know that we don't mix those tags up so the e-commerce when someone buys shoes it's a different kind of purchase and when someone books a equity an equity 
meeting, it's a different kind of conversion. So the data will be better and there won't be kind of weird uh, mix up between, between the two. So for that one, I've added this kind of filter here. Okay, so the same th at the same time as this trigger is firing, we have these variables. So the data layer was filled with the information about the activity booking, including the appointment type name, calendar name, uh, price, ID, email, all that stuff. So we have these data layer variables that we create in Google Tag Manager based on the data layer uh, information. So appointment type appointment type name for example you can see equity appointment type uh, name is our variable here and you remember in our tags we have the equity appointment type name here which is based on the message we hear from equity okay so we make these variables at the same time we fire our trigger uh, triggering event. So here we have you know the price paid and the calendar name, email, unique ID, all that stuff. Okay. So uh, the next step or the kind of last step is now to fire our actual tags. So for example. Uh, using the Google Analytics 4 uh, purchase tag, for example. This is a nice example. So as you can see, this is being triggered by the trigger I showed you before, the one that was uh, triggered by the data layer event. And for this one, the event name is purchase. It's the same name for Google Analytics as it is for our kind of data layer, they go hand in hand. And here to send the information, if we go to Google Analytics and we take a look at this purchase here in our debugger view, we can see uh, the transaction ID, for example, and we can see the name of the appointment, uh, the appointment type name, quantity, uh, price, all that stuff. So that is done using the send e-commerce data and our data source is our data layer, which we have uh, set up in our listener tag. You, you remember the tag that was listening for this message. And there we have it. Those are kind of the steps. Number one, send a message. Number two, listen for a message. Number four, uh, launch the trigger and fill the data layer variables. And number four, launch our tag. For example, the Google Analytics 4 tag. So it's a complex setup, step by step, a lot of custom code needed. So hopefully this will make you uh, kind of understand how it works step by step and also uh, perhaps kind of push you towards uh, buying a solution instead of trying to figure this out on your own because it's gonna take years probably to learn all this stuff to be able to do it yourself.